Good morning and welcome to Bible in a Year. As today we are on day 213 of reading through the Holy Bible, the Inter New International Version, in 365 days. Um, so thank you for coming along. It's been 213 days now we've been doing this, and uh, we are now in the period of exile um, as we're going through the adventure timeline. That's basically the breakdown of the Bible into sections. Uh, this one has explored the time of the kings during when the people of Israel were, were taken out of their countries, uh, most specifically the, the uh, Israel, the ten tribes in the north, and Judah, the two tribes in the south. Israel was taken to exile by the Syrians. Judah in the south was taken by the Babylonians in exile. Um, as we saw the other, the other day, um, for 190 days, the people of the north disobeyed God, and that's why Isaiah, is it, was it Isaiah or Ezekiel? Sorry, I think it's Ezekiel. He lays on his, no, it's Isaiah, lays on his side um, for the number of days in which the people of God um, had disobeyed. Um, God, so they lay for 190 days on the one side, and then um, 40 days on the other side to signify 40 days, or 40 years, sorry, 190 years that the people had disobeyed God in the north, and then 40 years that the uh, people of Judah had disobeyed God. Um, so a visual reminder of what the people of God, how the people of God had disobeyed God and turned away from him. Um, so yeah, so we see, uh, we see this uh, time of exile for the kings first and then now the prophets and what they have to say on behalf of God to the people of God. And so we're reading today Isaiah 47 to 48, Ezekiel 8 to 9, and Proverbs 12, 13 to to 16. Isaiah 48, the Lord addresses his people. Since they've been unfaithful to him, they will experience judgment. He laments in verse 18, Oh, that you have listened to my commands. Then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your offspring would have been like the sand and your descendants like the grain. Though the Lord will bring judgment because they have been unfaithful, he will restore his people if they turn back to him. Ezekiel 8 to 9, Ezekiel 8, though the prophets is in Exile, the Lord gives him a vision of Jerusalem. He sees the temple, both the abominations of false worship and the glory of God that still abides within it. The Lord repeatedly calls Ezekiel son of man. In Daniel 7, this term will take on a new meaning and describes of one to whom God will hand all authority and power. Jesus will refer to him as the son of man, claiming the promise of Daniel 7 to receive power, dominion, and glory from God. Ezekiel 9, a man dressed in linen, which is a priestly garb, is told to put on, to put a mark on the foreheads of all those who mourn the abomination happening in the temple. The mark is a Hebrew letter Tau, which is in the shape of a cross. Six men are sent to kill all those who do not have a sign of a cross on their foreheads. In this foreshadowing, those who are mourning the loss of true worship in the temple are marked with a cross on their foreheads as it spares their lives. At baptism, the priest or deacon and the parents and godparents make the sign of the cross on the child's forehead. Ezekiel 9 um, then is a foreshadowing of the salvific work of Jesus who will lay down his life by humbly submitting to the death on the cross. Proverbs 12, 13 to 16, Solomon gives instruction to the young men concerning righteous virtue versus foolish deceit. Fools are trapped by their sinful talk, filled with bad things. Um, we are not to listen to their advice um, or annoyed by their criticism, for they do not reap any awards. Righteous, on the other hand, escape trouble by their talk, and with good things, we are to listen to their advice and overlook their criticism and insults and reap the rewards of their good works. So let's get into the readings. Isaiah chapters 47. 
Go down, sit in the dust, virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, daughter of the Babylonians. No more will you be called tender or delicate. Take millstones and grind flour. Take off your veil. Lift up your skirts, bare your legs, and wade through the streams. Your nakedness will be exposed and your shame uncovered. I will take vengeance. I will spare no one. Our Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, is his name, is the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence. Go into darkness, daughter of the Babylonians. No more will you be called queen of kingdoms. I was angry with my people and desecrated my inheritance. I gave them into your hands and you showed them no mercy. Even on the aged you laid a very heavy yoke. You said, I will continue forever, the eternal queen. But you did not consider these things or reflect on what might happen. Now then, listen, you wanton creature, lounging in your security and saying to yourself, I am, and there is none beside me. I will never be a widow or suffer the loss of children. Both of these will overtake you. In a moment, on a single day, loss of child and widowhood. They will come upon you in full measure in spite of your many sorceries and all your potent spells. You have trusted in your wickedness, and in view said, No one sees me. Your wisdom and knowledge mislead you. When you say to yourself, I am, and there is none beside me, disaster will come upon you, and you will not know how to conjure it away. A calamity will fall upon you that you cannot ward off with a ransom. A catastrophe you cannot foresee will suddenly come upon you. Keep on, then, with your magic spells and with your many sorceries, which you have labored at since childhood. Perhaps you will succeed. Perhaps you will cause terror. All the counsel you have received has only worn you out. Let your astrologers come forward, those stargazers who make predictions month by month. Let them save you from what is coming upon you. Surely they are like rubble. The fire will burn them up. They cannot even save themselves for the power of the flame. Here are no coals to warm anyone. Here is no fire to sit by. That is all they can do for you. These you have labored with and trafficked with since childhood. Each of them goes on in his error. There is not one that can save you. Chapter 48 Listen, listen to this, O house of Israel. You who are called by the name of Israel... And come from the line of Judah, you who take oaths in the name of the Lord, and invoke the gods of Israel, but not in truth or righteousness. You who will call yourselves citizens of the holy city and rely on God of Israel, the Lord Almighty is his name. I foretold the former things long ago. My mouth announced them, and I made them known. Then suddenly I acted, and they came to pass. For I knew how stubborn you were. The sinews of your neck were iron, the forehead was bronze. Therefore I told you these things long ago. Before they happened, I announced them to you, so that you could not say, My idols did them. My wooden images and metal gods ordained them. You have heard these things. Look at them all. Will you not admit them? From now on I will tell you of new things, of hidden things unknown to you. They are created now and not long ago. You have not heard of them before today. So you cannot say, yes, I knew of them. You have neither heard nor understood. From of old your ear has not been open. Well, do I know how treacherous you are? You were called a rebel from birth. For my own name's sake I delayed my wrath. For the sake of my praise I hold it back from you, so as not to cut you off. See, I have refined you, though not as silver I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, for my own sake I did this. How can I let myself be defamed? I will not yield my glory to another. Listen to me, O Jacob, Israel, whom I have called. I am he. I am the first and I am the last. My own hand laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I summon them, they all stand up together. Come together, all of you, and listen. Which of the idols have foretold these things? The Lord's chosen ally will carry out his purpose against Babylon. His arm will be against the Babylonians. I, even I, have spoken. Yes, I have called him. I will bring him, and he will succeed in his mission. Come near me and listen to this. For the first announcement, I have not smoke, spoken in secret. At the time it happens, I am there. And now the Sovereign Lord has sent me with his Spirit. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. 
I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the ways you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your descendants would have been like the sand, your children like it, num like its numberless grains. Their name would never be cut off nor destroyed from before me. Leave Babylon, flee from the Babylonians, announce this with the shouts of joy and proclaim it. Send it out to the ends of the earth, say the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. It did not thirst when he led them through the desert. He made them water flow for them from the rock. He split the rock and water gushed out. There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Ezekiel chapters 8 and 9. Chapter 8. In the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day, while I was sitting in my house and the elders of Judah were sitting before me, the hand of the sovereign Lord came upon me there. I looked and I saw a figure like that of a man. From what appeared to be his waist down, he was like fire. And from there up, his appearance was as bright as glowing metal. He stretched out what looked like a hand and took me by the hair of my head. The spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven. And in visions of God, he took me to Jerusalem the entrance to the north gate of the inner court where the idol that provoked where the idol that provokes to jealousy stood and there before me was the glory of god of israel as in the vision i had seen in the plain then he said to me son of man look towards the north so i looked in the entrance the north of the gate and of the altar i saw this idol of jealousy and he said to me, Son of man, do you see what they are doing? The utter detestable things the house of Israel is doing here. Things that will drive me far from my sanctuary. But you will see things that are even more detestable. Then he brought me to the entrance to the court. I looked and I saw a hole in the wall. He said to me, Son of man, now dig into the wall. So I dug into the wall and saw a doorway there. And he said to me, Go in and see the wicked and detestable things they are doing here. So I went in and looked, and I, I saw portrayed all over the walls all kinds of crawly things and detestable animals and all the idols of the house of Israel. In front of them stood seventy elders of the house of Israel. And Jezaniah, son of Shaphan, was standing amongst them. Each had a censer in his hand, and a fragrant cloud of incense was rising. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the darkness, each at the shrine of his own idol? They say, The Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. Again, he said, You will see them doing that, uh, doing things that are even more detestable. Then he brought me to the entrance to the north gate of the house of the Lord, and I saw women sitting there mourning for Tammuz. He said to me, Do you see this, son of man? You will see things that are even more detestable than this. Then he brought me into the inner court of the house of the Lord, and there at the entrance to the temple, between the portico and the altar, were about twenty-five men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and the faces toward the east. They were bowing down to the sun in the east. He said to me, Have you seen this son of man? It is a trivial matter for the house of Judah to do detestable things they are doing here. Must they also fill the land with violence and continually provoke me to anger? Look at them putting the branch to their nose. Therefore I will deal with them in anger. I will not look on them with pity or spare them. Although they shout in my ears, I will not listen to them. Chapter 9 Then I heard him call out in a loud voice, Bring the guard of the city here, each with a weapon in his hand. And I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with, dead, with a deadly weapon in his hand. With them was a man clothed in linen, who had a writing kit at his side. They came in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of God of Israel went up from above the cherubim, where it had been, and moved to the threshold of the temple. Then the Lord called to the man clothed in linen, who had the writing kit at his side, and said to him, Go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the forehead of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. As I listened... He said to the others, Follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter old men, young men, and maidens, women, and children. But do not touch anyone who has the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were in front of the temple. Then he said to them, Defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go. So they went out and began killing throughout the city. 
While they were killing, I was left alone. I fell face down, crying out, O oh, Sovereign Lord, are you going to destroy the entire remnant of Israel in this outpouring of your wrath on Jerusalem? He answered me, The sin of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. The land is full of bloodshed and the city is full of injustice. They said, The Lord has forsaken the land. The Lord does not see us. So I will not look on them with pity or spare them. But I will bring down on their heads what they have done. Then the men in linen with the writing kit at his side brought back words saying, I have done as you have commanded. Here ends our second reading. Our third reading comes from Proverbs chapter 12 verses 13 to 16. An evil man is trapped by his sinful talk, but a righteous man escapes trouble. From the fruit of his lips a man is filled with good things. Surely as the work of his hands rewards him. The way of a fool seems right to him. But a wise man listens to advice. A fool shows his annoyance at once, but a prudent man overlooks an insult. Here ends our third reading. So we see here Solomon gives instruction of what it is to be righteous. Now when we speak in the ways of righteousness, that we are taken away from trouble, as we see in the example of um, those in Ezekiel that... Uh, that do not walk in righteousness. Um, they are trapped by their own sinful talk. And uh, and they don't reap any rewards. Actually, they they don't they're they're killed um, brutally. And but we see just like in this Proverbs that God overlooks uh, the the uh, insults of the righteous and they reap the good rewards of their favor. Uh, we see the same thing in Ezekiel, that they are marked with the cross, the Tau. Um, this is a foreshadowing of how, um, one, um, how Jesus will be the, the redemption, the, the saving for those who uh, believe in him. And uh, as we talk about in our Ash Wednesday service, that we were marked with the cross of Christ. To dust, to dust we shall... And we also receive that at baptism. We put the anointing oil and baptize uh, the baby as, or the adult or the teenager or whoever, um, that they might be sealed with the cross of Christ. Um, again, this reading in Ezekiel is this foreshadowing of how we will, one day all will be sealed with the cross of Christ, those who believe and trust in him and are baptized. Uh, so it's a beautiful thing. And I mean, we see the, the story of, um, Isaiah that those who are in Babylon will fall uh, but that those that God allows them um, the ability to turn back to him and to fall away from the disaster that is upon them uh, as it says in verse um, uh, sorry yeah, as it says in uh Eleven, for my sake, for my own sake, I do this. How can I let myself be defamed? I will not yield my glory to another. Um, so we don't have to be defined by those around us. Um, that if we turn from um, the ways of those around us and turn towards God, um, that He has a place um, created for us uh, that will uh, never end. Um, and like. Ezekiel, we we may see the uh, see the kingdom of God. We may reign with God in His righteousness in His kingdom. So thanks be to God for that. Let us uh, give thanks to God through prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the gift of life and the fact that we are alive. Life is your gift. We ask God that we might grow um, in strength and age. Um, and that in our infirmities you might be our strength. We ask God that you you would uh, give us um, healing in our brokenness, and that you might bind up our wounds. Um, you make our make yourself known to us, and we thank you, God, uh, for your mighty name uh, and what the power that we gain through your name. For we are made holy 
through your righteousness, not through our own. We thank you for everything that you've given us and all that you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me again today in this day 213. Uh, my prayer is that you are, continue to grow in the, in the uh, fear and wisdom uh, and knowledge of our Lord. And that as you come to know the knowledge of God, that it humbles you and makes you want to more and more be a follower of Christ and to lean into him and trust in him and have him as your shepherd and your guide. To God be the glory, now and forever. Amen.